Okay, so we're talking about facelifts and neck lifts, um, and everybody wants to know about recovery, and that is extremely important for someone to know when they are thinking about having a face and neck lift. They need to know how much time they need to take off work, do they need someone to help them, and we're gonna go into all of that right now. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about pain. Um, so pain and how about sensation? So uh, it is important to recognize, I think, that a facelift is not nearly as painful, a facelift, a neck lift, is not nearly as painful as patients think it is going to be. In fact, many patients only take one or two pain pills the night of or the morning after the surgery, and then after that really don't require any more. When I speak of pain pills, I'm talking about narcotic pain medications, and we still do give those to patients, but again, in this particular procedure, they don't need a lot of it. Part of the reason is that for reasons that I can't really explain, facelifts and necklace just are not as painful as you would expect them to be. Um, the second reason is that we do give patients other medications that help reduce pain. Um, so there is a whole non-narcotic protocol that we educate patients about, and when they take all of those medications together as well, the narcotic pain medications become a lot less important. So pain, uh, I would guess, again, just to summarize things, uh, it's a little bit painful the first night, maybe the morning afterwards, but really after that time, pain really isn't the dominant sensation. Um, let's talk about what some of the dominant sensations are sort of in the short term. Well, one, uh, there is a sense of uh, tightness or even fullness, um, and it's not because the skin has been over pulled in any way. Um, the reason for that sense of tightness is one, portions of the face are numb, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, and that creates this overlap sensation of tightness. Another reason that there's a sensation of tightness is that the face does obviously swell and that pushes out a little bit on the skin. So that also accounts for it as well. Now, uh, let's talk about the, oh, and I should say that that sensation lasts uh, anywhere for about a week, so in some patients up to about three weeks, although again, patients often are commenting on it, they're not really complaining about it. Um, so that's an important thing to know. It's not necessarily unpleasant. Let's talk about numbness. So um, there definitely is some numbness associated with a facelift and with a neck lift. Um, and it's a kind of numbness that is, uh, it's not static. Um, so the numbness that a patient experiences initially doesn't reflect the numbness that they might experience in the long term. Um, in the short term, someone may have numbness that goes all the way to their central cheek and then you know halfway uh, down their neck or even the entirety of the neck. I ask patients to trust me though. It is, uh, I've never had a patient who has said that it, that degree of numbness persists in the long run. Often at about a couple of weeks, certainly a couple of months, and certainly when you get to a year, um, the amount of numbness has diminished significantly. Um, uh, so much so that usually the area that stays numb in the long run is about a finger breath or perhaps at the most two finger breaths uh, uh, away from the incisions in all directions. Now, of course, people, everybody's different, every facelift is different, but as a general rule, it can take a little while to get to that time. It's just really important to not be dismayed or concerned about it. It's a normal part of the process and be patient with the recognition that it's gonna improve in time. Um, uh, another thing that I think is important to talk about uh, when we're talking about recovery is when can a patient return to activity? So. Um, we want patients to be up and walking really right away. The night of the surgery, with some guidance and some assistance, of course, um, is really helpful. It's very healthy. It really decreases the risk of getting a blood clot in the legs, which is very rare for facial surgery anyway, but it's always something we're thinking about. Um, and then, uh, so walking right away. Um, and we just don't want patients walking in a way where they're doing kind of power walking, where they're trying to the, raise their heart rate, um, raise, uh, you know, it raises the blood pressure. And that's where the real problem comes is that if we're raising the blood pressure too much in the first uh, couple of days, couple of weeks, it can lead to increased swelling or even a little bit of bleeding. Um, I've never had to take someone back 
to have an operation to remove blood, but I think that's because I asked my patient to be so careful. But yes, raising the blood pressure too soon, um, usually through activity done too early, can potentially cause that. Now, a patient, patients always wanna know when can I re return to their normal exercise routine? Really, it's best to wait. This may sound like a long time, but it's really valuable, really important part of the process to wait for about three weeks until a patient starts running, jumping, jogging, weightlifting, straining. Um, that's a really important time frame um, because we, again, we wanna reduce the potential for having any post-operative bleeding um, and also waiting that period of time also allows some of the swelling abate before the blood pressure is raised, which can augment the swelling a little bit. Um, so uh, now what about swimming? I think really three to four weeks is about the appropriate time for swimming as well. Um, and then um, what about if they play contact sports? Really for most contact sports, I think it's advisable to wait at least a month, but perhaps six to eight weeks, depending on what the nature of the sporting activity that the contact sport includes. Um, and so that's always up for conversation. Uh, what about how much help does a patient need? Well, I think it's really helpful to have, um, in fact, it's almost mandatory to have someone who can stay with the patient the night of the surgery and preferably someone who can help um, throughout the subsequent day and maybe stay one more night. Um, that really uh, you know, sets my mind at ease to know that the patient who had just had a procedure on their face where they might have a little bit of blurriness in their vision um, and need some help with organizing, taking their medications at appropriate times, I think it's good for that first day and a half, two days to have someone available. Um, patients should expect to really not drive for about a week. Now, um, uh, and sometimes patients need a little bit longer than that. I think the, the safety thresholds that need to be thought about when we're allowing a patient to drive is one, they absolutely have to be able to be off of narcotic pain medication. You can't be driving when you're on the narcotic pain medication. Again, usually with a face and a neck lift, that's not a problem. Um, another thing that's important is that your vision can't be blurry. And then another thing that's important is you have to feel comfortable at least turning your head and your neck enough that you're able to see your rear view mirrors and your side mirrors. That's really important. Um, so for most patients, that's at least a week or even slightly longer. Again, the rules for that are a little bit variable and we, we, you know, we really help provide guidance to our patients, but we give them the guidelines and allow them also to make good decisions. But I would say at least a week of no driving is important. And thus it's important to stock up on the appropriate foods that you're gonna need to have at your house and always have someone that you can rely on to help you out after surgery if you need someone to come by and check on you and help you out with some items. Um, I do use drains in most facelifts and neck lifts. I said most, that's not really accurate. It's really all face lifts and neck lifts. Um, and then also with an endoscopic brow lift, I also use a drain. They're of the smaller variety. Um, they're not the larger ones we use in the body. Uh, they almost always can be taken out at about um, two to three days. And, um, uh, and the purpose of that is to remove any blood that might collect underneath the skin um, that would lead to a little bit more bruising. Um, so if we leave that in for just two or three days, uh, they're not necessarily fun, but for two or three days, most patients can handle it. We remove it um, and, uh, and you know, they, they kind of forget that they even had it. So there is a little bit of care and management and recording of the volumes that needs to be done with those drains, um, but they really are valuable and help, uh, help create really nice results with diminished bruising. Um, I think one other important thing uh, to talk about um, is uh, if someone is having a blepharoplasty as part of the procedure, those patients may need a little bit more help for a little bit longer because again, um, those patients can have a little bit of a tendency to have a little bit of blurry vision afterwards as some of the swelling is dissipating. Also, there's some ointments that we place on the eyelids that can even get into the eyes um, and that can create a little bit of blurriness. Um, and so, you know, especially for a short period of time, it's good to have someone who can help guide you out of bed to a bathroom if needed, um, but rarely is that an issue. Uh, and so uh, it's just something good to know is that the recoveries may be a little bit different depending on what combinations of procedures that you have. 
Patients want to know when will they look like they didn't have surgery. And everybody's a little bit different. You know, I will say, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Uh, I had a patient um, who was a real estate agent, had a facelift and a neck lift, and she was back showing patients, uh, not patients, but clients, um, houses for sale uh, roughly on the eighth day. Um, and so uh, that is, uh, that's uh, telling of the fact that some patients can look very natural um, as if they didn't have surgery quite early. Now that particular patient did need to put a little bit of makeup in the lower neck and she actually came from a colder climate so wearing a scarf wasn't an issue, but really the face with the hair down looked very natural, unoperated um, within a week really. Uh, I've had patients who were medical professionals who just could not take a lot of time off, who really went back to their work at four to five days. I wouldn't recommend that. I think one week to even two weeks is best, but they were able to do it. They didn't feel self-conscious. Um, they didn't seem to think it was a distraction. And so that speaks to the fact that many patients who have a really nice, controlled, well done face and neck lift can look as if they did not have an operation quite early. Now, on the flip side, I've definitely had patients who have felt somewhat self-conscious, felt as if people would recognize that they had facial surgery for quite some time. And there've definitely been patients who've stayed out of the public eye for about two or even three weeks. I would actually say that's a little bit unusual, the three week time frame. Um, I would say what's a little bit more average and what I ask patients to plan on is about 10 to 14 days. You know, so if their work in particular um, is one in which they have to be able to speak to people directly or virtually, and they really don't want to have people know that they had surgery, that it'd be best to start setting up their appointments about two weeks with some flexibility, flexibility perhaps, so that if they feel like they uh, are looking back to normal earlier, they can schedule some appointments earlier or a little bit of flexibility. So if they feel like they need a little bit more time, they can push some of those appointments off. So that's really the time frame of recovery. We also talked about pain. We talked about return to activity. I think that really should give future patients, prospective patients, a pretty good idea of what to expect.